Well hello everyone and welcome back to Julie's Orchids. I'm going to do a follow-up video. Over the Christmas holidays we went down south and western Australia to Denmark, western Australia because it was hot here. Perth recorded its hottest Christmas in 50 years and while we were gone the air conditioner went, well basically it couldn't keep up with the heat. Um, multiple days in a row of 42 C plus and non-functioning air conditioning caused some damage to my orchids. So we're going to do a follow-up on some of the ones that were damaged and I since have received some further collateral damage and we'll discuss that in a little bit. Um, but again, welcome to my channel. Thank you to all my new subscribers. If you like the information here, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe would be nice. And Let's have a look at our first victim. Okay, well this is what's left of Fragmopedium Fritz Schomburg. Uh, when I came home from holidays, rather when I left from holidays, it had um, four beautiful green leaves. And when I came home, they were all blackened, burned, and painful. Now, strangely enough, it has kept its bud and is continuing to form its bud. Now everything in my right mind says that I should cut that bud and give this plant a chance to survive. I'm going to be selfish. I don't think this plant is going to live through this. It's got one leaf left. Uh, when I watered it on Saturday, when I picked it up to move it to the kitchen to water it, all of the leaves fell off, except for this one. And I cut this one because at the time I cut it into healthy tissue, and this, this just keeps spreading. It looks like there's a little growth or something coming down there. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna gamble with this one, right? I love the flowers on Fritz. Um, I've given one of these to a family friend, so if this one should die in a couple of years, I'm sure I could get a division from that family friend. And I've decided I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to enjoy this bloom. And whatever happens to this plant happens to this plant, but uh, I don't have much hopes for it. So we'll do a follow-up at some point in time on that one. Now, on the other hand, this one with our pretty flower that's just really not opening up right. I'm not going to be able to pronounce this name. Um, here it is. Um, she's got no roots. Uh, I got her from a lady uh, off the of Facebook marketplace and she had no roots. I should have cut both the flower spikes when I got it, but this flower spike was in very pretty bloom and I decided I would just write it out and see what happened. And she was maintaining pretty plumpish bulbs considering she had no roots and has been growing this one. Now after I returned back from holidays, uh, this thing looks, you know, we have an orchid raisin <laughs> instead of a pseudo bulb. Uh, it's in pretty rough shape. so. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the spent spike because as you can see it's yellowing. It's consuming these nutrients in the hopes to save these buds while new root growth is starting on the new growth. Um, but we're going to cut this one with the flower on it and I'm going to put it in a bud vase because as you can see there's a few buds and if they open, well, that's the bee's knees. And if they don't, well, I've gotten one off this spike and I got to enjoy the other ones. And I'm hoping that by cutting this spike with the flowers on it will trigger this one to get this little guy to make some more roots. Now, the other problem with this plant and two Mazda Valias that I got from the same Facebook Marketplace seller 
is they had thrips when I bought them. And I thought I had them under control, but I bought these a few weeks before we went on holiday. And um, they are still sort of in isolation, I saw from the other plants. Now I have not seen a return on thrips on these, but later in the video we'll discuss my Mazda values because that's an entirely different kettle of fish. And another reason I don't have high hopes for this one is I think those little black dots are thrips damage. Um, so this one's going to go with the other ones, with these, and they're going to go into isolation. But without much further ado, I'm going to cut this flower spike. And again, I'm going to cut it as close to this base as possible. Part of me is saying maybe leave some of it, but I don't know. Now these are my old beat up crap scissors, but I have sterilized these with uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And there we go. So that's all done. I have the pretty little flower in a bud boss. And now I'm going to bring over the Mazda values. And would you just look at those pitiful ladies? And that comfy dog. She is snoring a little bit. I don't know that the microphone can pick it up. But happy is in happy puppy land. And the Mazda values, well, they're not in happy Mazda value land. This one, well, it's going in the bin. Everything about it. I'm going to pour that water out, all of this, chuck it out in the bin, it's dead. Um, all the leaves are falling off. I saw creepy crawlies just running amok in the soil here. It's going to go. It's gone. This one, uh, this morning I saw creepy crawlies on it. I gave it a wash off. I think that's still a bit of a thrift right there, but it's hard to tell. Uh, it didn't take the heat well at all. As you guys know, Mazda values are cool growers. They're not hot growers. And my bedroom got up to about 42 degrees. And it maintained that uh, with very poor air circulation because my ducted aircon wasn't working um, for about three, four days. And um, basically it's kicked the butt of a lot of my plants. So dead one. This one, uh, we've got roots. We've got a new growth. I've seen thrips in it. Uh, we're going to try to save it. I'm going to treat that later. I'm not going to do it on video. Um, basically, I've got some water, isopropyl rubbing alcohol, liquid paraffin oil um, that I'm going to spray it with, and then I'm going to repot it. And then we're going to stick it in isolation away from the other plants. Uh, these will be an ISO in my laundry area <laughs> uh, because that's the furthest away from the house that we can get, uh, away from the rest of the plants that we can get, and uh, it's still fairly cool. Um, I will need to figure out a new place to put my fruit bowl because it's going to go there. And you can see my coffee machine is there. I'm getting ready to mop the floors, pardon the mop bucket. Um, but my fruit bowl is sitting on top of that countertop right there, which is where I'm going to put these. So the fruit bowl will come into the kitchen. Uh, at any rate, that's the Mazda values. And uh, I don't know that I'm going to try these particular kinds of plants again in my environment. Uh, I think they just require it to be too cool. And uh, summer times here are our danger climate, whereas in Back home in Illinois, it was winter because of the freezing weather. Uh, here in Perth, Australia, it's uh, summertime because it gets hot as hell. Um, yeah, those of you familiar with ACDC, or as they're referenced here in Western Australia, Akadaka, uh, the lead singer, or Bon Scott, I think, Bon Scott, was from Frio, Fremantle, not too far from here. And the song Highway to Hell is actually based off of a local highway um, that we actually drove 
down south to get to Denmark. So that'll give you an idea of how hot it can get here. It's uh, even, there's a song about it, so I don't think I can use that song for copyright purposes, but I think most of the people in the world is familiar with ACDC Highway to Hell um, because it does get hot as hell here in Perth and uh, Mazda values don't do good with it. And for another update that we're going to get a little bit more positive for, uh, this is my Oncidium Flaming Pole Okia. And I got it um, last May, repotted it, it suffered bad root loss, then it grew a whole crap ton of roots, got pot bound, was breaking the pot, so I put it into this bigger pot, it seemed to have been doing pretty good, it was starting to grow new roots here. And then the heat wave hit. Uh, and you can see we've got yellowing on stuff. You can see that we've had yellowing here. Those have broken off just like that. Um, but other than that, the two new growths it has been growing here and here don't seem to be any worse for the wear. I'm not getting any visible crinkling of the leaves that were growing. Uh, so I will consider this one a survived the heat wave success story. Thumbs up for this one. And now we're going to go to the, the real success story now. This one I've gotten not too long ago. It is a species on Cindium. Um, on Cindium spathsalatum. I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, and when I got that, it was basically these three bulbs, and you can see this is a massive plant. Um, got it at a Orchid Society show, and it did nothing for a while, and then it started to grow this thing, which is growing quite nicely, and as you can see, making lovely roots. And then through the heat wave, I came home, this pot was completely bone dry, everything was still lush green, just exactly the way it does, like I bought it. And then I turn it around, and I've got one two new more growths going and sorry look at all those roots so this one evidently really likes it hot uh, so that's the update on the heat damage from the plants so again I thank you guys for watching uh, thank you for subscribing. Um, we'll do some more follow-ups on these, particularly this one. It's known as the Candayan Dancer because uh, it is found in the Kandy area of Sri Lanka. I bought this one because it has special meaning to me. Um, my husband is Sri Lankan, ethnically Sri Lankan, and his family hails from the candy area in Sri Lanka. When we got married, we got married in Sri Lanka and wore the traditional um, wedding garments that would be worn in candy. And that was a lot of, a lot of fun and it was quite beautiful. Uh, the candy area of Sri Lanka is beautiful. Sri Lanka itself is beautiful, um, but this one has special meaning because of my husband and his family and where they come from and how I got to join the family by experiencing part of their ethnic culture. <clears throat> That's one of the other fun things about orchids is um, you can find some species or varieties or something that has special meanings for you. As I just mentioned, this plant here, I've never seen one in flower. I'm hoping with the size of these plants. Uh, it was a division. Um, I think the division has bloomed, but these parts have not yet, not that I could see. And they're supposed to have very pretty little yellow delicate flowers. I don't know if they're scented or not, but this is quite a vigorous growth. This has done this in uh, a month, month and a half. And these things literally popped up 
a week ago. Um, absolutely amazing. So thank you again for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe would be nice. And everyone have a happy, healthy, lovely, wonderful day.